Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. It's an honor and a pleasure to be with you today. I am so excited to introduce you to our first guest. When I heard his song, which I think he was nominated a Grammy for, but we'll find out more about the facts of that. When I heard his song uh, this morning, I got the chills. And just now, as we're talking in the back room, we're talking about that song. Um, uh, I got the chills again. And I know that you're going to resonate a lot with what he is bringing to the world. Uh, to describe or define Alvin Garrett with a singular title may be a near impossible task. However, after getting to know him, one would have to agree that he's certainly a pioneer of inspirational soul. This Alabama-born and raised preacher's son has woven over 20 years of diverse experience in the entertainment industry with the common thread of hope and inspiration. Whether it's R&B, gospel, pop, or jazz, you will recognize Garrett's inspirational fingerprint in all his music and business endeavors. Garrett's masterful songwriting, captivating smile, and spine-tingling voice are reminiscent of soul music legends Sam Cooke and Al Green. This honorable comparison began in 2015 with the release of the soul riveting song by myself. And that's the song I heard this morning, which many still compare to the timeless and epic nature of Sam Cooke's A Change Is Gonna Come. And I do remember that song too. In the summer of 2020, the Grammy nominated songwriter continued to carry the torch of musical activism with his thought provoking EP, The Awakening. With the weight of COVID, 29, uh, 2019 pandemic, and the heavy, heaviness of social uh, unrest, Alvin Garrett is crafted, has crafted a collection of songs sought to speak to and awaken the soul of America. And I think this is so important right now. And now Garrett is lifting spirits and lightening the mood with the beautiful new project of his called The Lightness of Love. Wow. Welcome to the show today, Gar Alvin Garrett. Yes. Thank you for having me. And, and I'm glad you got the chills. <laughs> oh, my God. I totally got the chills. I'm like, this is the music that I grew up with. And this is the music, you know, where you're really feeling the song of the soul. Like it's really moving you. Yes, yes, yes. And I am, as you mentioned in my in that wonderful bio, you know, being a, a, a son of a preacher man, but I also like to say son of a coal mining preaching mm. <laughs> just understanding the the value of hard work love and hope and really really pulling up your fellow man uh just being committed to capturing that in my music and and understanding that people on the other side of the song need to feel something because that's that's what I felt when I listened to music that helped me get through the tough times is what do they feel not just what do they hear but what do they feel yeah. You know, when I look at somebody like you that seems to be so talented because you really you really are like it's your duty to do this work. It's your duty to sing this song. It's your duty to share this music, because if you wouldn't be doing it, you would be doing us a disservice. And I want to you know, I just want to highlight that. And I, I think this is an important piece because, you know, you are in your gifts and you're doing you're doing your amazing work. Now, this song by myself is, you know, you and I were talking in the green room earlier about uh, what, what it brought up for me is it's such an important song for the times that we're in. Basically, you know, we're all walking each other home. We're, we're, we're coming to a place of unity and love, right? And, uh, you know, if, if we're not, if, we're, if we don't have the people around us or with us that want to walk in our principles of love and honor and respect and unity then 
I'm going by myself. Yes. Right? Yes, yes. And and togetherness is not a concept of proximity, right? <laughs> and just agreement, like, hey, you're near me, we look alike, we feel alike, we think we're from the same place. So we're together. That's not true. What is my conviction? Like, what do I stand for that I'm willing to stand alone for? And and that is a lonely journey, you know, and some people say, hey, let's go together, power team. Yeah. But when the going gets tough and when it really matters, where are you? Right. Mm -hmm. Really, really believe in. And, and that song for me was born from, you know, rejection, you know, from reaching out to not uh, across the aisle, but from friends and family, your your ride or die people who you expect to help you, who you expect to reciprocate and open up doors for you. And the answer is no, right? Because they don't believe what you believe. And for me, as an R&B uh, vocalist, sing about sex, sex sales, right? Mm -hmm. Sing about partying, that sales. You got a, you're a nice looking guy. Take your shirt off. Oh but, yeah. But what about the misogyny in the music? What about the hope that's missing? What about making family strong? And what about the things that are missing from army music? I want to do that. Well, you're not welcome. <laughs> well, I'll do it by myself. If you keep telling me, no, I'm going to stand for this type of music. Even if I have to go on by myself, whether my friends go with me, whether Anybody else goes with me or not, I believe. And I believe enough to do it alone if I have to. But that, I believe, is where you really discover unity. Mm -hmm. Discover unity when you move forward by yourself. And then you look to the left and you say, oh, you're heading in the same direction as I'm going? You want to go with me? Oh, I'm already headed that way. So you cannot find unity until you know your own conviction. Right. So you know your own conviction that says, I'm willing to do this alone. And then you find those other few and far between people from all across races, all across genders, all across socioeconomic boundaries that says, I too believe what you believe and I'm willing to go with you. And that I think is the call and also the leadership that we're called right now on to lead, to be the yeah. leader and you, you being a leader in the way that you are an influencer and inspirer. And um, it, you know, it would be so easy for you, like you said, to um, create music and make the kind of music with, you know, the sex cells and all those things, right? Uh -huh. But for you to really stay with your principles of what, you know, family and unity and the things that you stand for. Um, even the, the song by myself, obviously, was written like you said because you were being rejected and you were you wanted to go that path but because um, so many people wanted you to go a different path that's that's how that appeared is that right absolutely absolutely and that was my manifesto <laughs> that says and, and was that really hard for you uh it was liberating it was I, liberating it was liberating it was liberating and, and that's when I found myself is when I stopped spending the type of energy to build relationships or to hold on to people. You're actually dragging them, right? <laughs> you're actually dragging yeah. them. Spiritually, you're dragging that weight. Emotionally, you're dragging that weight. And I use this example. I said, you know, I can get in a one man boat and get, grab me two paddles and I can row with all my strength, right? And go a certain speed. But if you're getting in with me and you're not rowing, I'm going half as fast with twice the weight. But guess what? If you grab some rows and we row together, we have twice the weight going twice as fast, right? So if you're going to be in my proximity, work with me and we go twice as far. But if you're just sitting here weighing me down, you're going to have to get out. <laughs> you're going to have to get out. And that's that's just a, an example of what I went through because I'm putting in the work. I know what I want. I know what I believe in. But if you're just going to weigh me down, try to discourage me, tell me to do something else, I will go on by myself. I'm okay. Yeah, I love those boundaries. I love that clarity. That's 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 good. 
That's really good. Now, you know, the time, our time is already coming to a close. Let's tell the audience, I know that you've got a project coming out. You've got a new album coming out. Where do people find your music, first of all? And where can they follow you on social media? And what do you want to know? What do you want us to know about next year? And you got two minutes. And then, of course, I want to let the audience know we want we're going to have you back for a longer discussion in the early part of next year. So go for it, Alvin. AlvinGarrett.com. Follow me there. And on social media, it's the Alvin Garrett. That's on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. The Alvin Garrett. And I have a new album coming out on January 12th, 2024, called Safety. And that stands for Songs for the Yard, SFTY. And so I want you to follow me on the journey to safety at AlvinGarrett.com and on social media at the Alvin Garrett. Wow, that's easy. That's all easy. That's all good stuff. Are you planning on doing any touring next year? Absolutely. Absolutely. We we have a lot of wonderful content. We're telling some great stories and I'd love for people to follow up, you know, follow me and find out the great work that I've been doing uh, in on the philanthropy side and activism side. I've been working with a lot of people who've been previously incarcerated and we are wow. telling stories of redemption. So check it out. Yeah, I, I think it's beautiful, the work that you're doing. Again, it's very soul filled. All of you, if you want to be inspired and you want to have some goosebumps going, just it's very easy. Just go and look at this song by myself. I mean, it was like as soon as I heard that song, I'm like, wow, now that was the movement. So it's it's wonderful to get that kind of feeling from music uh, again. How about that again? Um, so, Alvin, it was a pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you so much. Many blessings to you in this holiday season. And we're going to see you again in the early part of next year. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. God bless. We're going to take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. We'll be right back. All right, everyone. Welcome back. My next guest is Desiree Young. She's an author, speaker, and publisher born and raised in the Milwaukee area. Having seen her parents through four divorces, she's no stranger to pain or mental health challenges. Uh, she's written two memoirs with the goal of sharing that not only uh, her struggles, but also her healing journey and how she found God in the midst of, all, midst of it all. That's really good. I, I look forward to hearing that. Today, she continues to write and started a publishing company to help others share their stories. That's awesome. Desiree Young, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Can I just say I absolutely love this podcast and what you guys are doing, Stories that Inspire Hope. I'm like, yes, all about it. Right? <laughs> yeah, it sounds it sounds kind of like similar to what you're doing, helping people, you know, inspiring people into hope, right? And to possibility. Absolutely. Because is that what happened to you? Yeah. So a little bit about my story. Um, I grew up going to church all my life, um, knew God, you know, reading my Bible and things like that. And when I was 18, I reached a pivotal point where I realized I need, I need a lot of help. <laughs> and what my life was like before, prior to turning 18, I saw my parents my parents are lovely people. I absolutely love them. I know they love me and they, they did the, their best with raising me and everything like that. Love them to death. Um, but I saw a lot of turmoil in, in some of my home life. And I saw my parents often arguing and fighting with one another, uh, sometimes blaming me from their arguing. And I didn't feel like I could talk with them about it or talk with people around me. And I tended to bottle up all of that pain. And I realized when I was 18, I was like, if I keep spiraling the way that I am, I might not make it very far after this. So I decided, hey, I need to reach out to someone and ask for help, which was a really huge deal for me because I did not like asking for help. I wanted to be the person that people went to for help, but I didn't want to receive it myself. And I met a mentor and I talked with her. I was like, hey, I'm kind of struggling a little bit with my life. Is it okay if we, we meet and talk and I, I don't know, I can get some perspective here. And she was very kind, very gracious. And we would get together and we would talk. And I feel a little bad thinking about it now because I kind of just like dumped all of this emotional baggage on her. I was like, there's this going on with my family. There's this going on. There's this going on with me. 
I was thinking a lot of um, harming myself. And with that harm, I wasn't trying to kill myself. I was trying to alleviate emotional pain that I was dealing with. And I talked with her about, you know, struggles I was having with that and different family dynamics. I was like, I just don't know what, what to do. I'm, I'm 18. I'm still, yes, I'm legally an adult, but I'm still kind of a child. <laughs> I just don't like to admit that I'm still a child. <laughs> and she was very kind and not only listening with me, but she said, hey, you know what we're going to do? We are going to do a, a study, you and I. And in that study, we went through the Book of Song of Solomon. Now you can read it for its literal translation or you can read it as an allegory. We read it as an allegory of Christ's love for the church. And in that she's like, okay, we're going to do a deep dive into God's love. And part of me was like, yeah, God's love. I, I know that. I've been seeing, yes, Jesus loves me in Sunday school all of my life. Yeah, yep, I get that. But doing this uh, deep dive study of Song of Solomon really helps unpack layers. And in unpacking those layers, I got to see the true depth of God's love for me. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you we went, did a deep dive study, I'm talking, we were, we had met for about four weeks and we were still in chapter one, still <laughs> like the first part of chapter one there. And there is a verse, uh, chapter one, verse five, it says, I am dark, but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem. Um, dark like the tints of Kedar. And what that verse means is that the bride, she is looking at herself as dark because of different sins in her life. And we can interpret that in our own lives, dark because of different pains that we've gone through, of uh, different struggles that we've had. And in looking at that, she said, yes, there, there is this darkness there, but I am still lovely. I am still desired. I am still pursued. I'm still wanted. And having that mindset of, yes, there are different pains that you have, different struggles that you're having, but you are still loved despite all of that. You are still desired despite all of that. It started to make a shift in my mind about how God perceived me. Because in my mind, I was like, yes, Jesus loves me. But did I really believe that? Like, I believe that if, okay, if I follow these rules and if I do this, that, and the other thing, then he loves me, right? No, no. He just loves you because of who you are, because of who you are to him. You are precious to him. And I started to think about that more. And another verse that really like still sticks out to me is Song of Solomon uh, 2.14. And it says, oh, my darling, and the clefts of the rock and the crannies of the mountainside, let me see your face. Let me hear your voice for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. And that that's paraphrased a little bit, but what that interpreted to me was I was sometimes told to sit down and shut up. I would, I would sing or would, I would try to raise concerns or about my emotional well being. that that was the response that I was given. And to hear that verse and to hear the Lord saying, Hey, your voice is sweet your face is lovely. Like you are beautiful to me. And I want, I want to hear you speak. I want to hear you sing was a game changer for me. Um, for a while I was writing a blog and the blog was called speak 91. And the reason for the name was because the Lord was telling me, Hey, I want to hear you speak. I want you to use your voice more because that is something that I've placed in you to, to be a blessing to other people. And I used to look at it as something that's like, okay, I need to hide this away. So going through that verse and going through this study really helped me to, to see myself as more of who God made me to be and who he called me. And I continued to do that study with her for, for several weeks, actually like several months. Like my, my sophomore year of college, we came back and we're like, all right, let's get back into it because we still were not done. And it was a, a beautiful journey where the Lord was starting to heal me because I was starting to love myself and value myself because I, I was borrowing his words for me. And that continued and continued on. And it also continued to me allowing other people into my life and allowing myself to be loved by other people and to truly love other people in turn because seeing all the turmoil in my house, I was like, nah, loves the scam. I'm gonna keep that at arm's length. No, thank you, don't want that. But having that love start to uh, start to rewire and rework my, my own brain and my own heart 
I was able to start to trust other people more. Like there was still a process. There was still some trial and error that occurred. There were times when it was like, okay, I could trust this person. All right, Susie, she, she's going to be there for me and I can tell her my life story and I can tell her when I'm struggling. And, and a couple of times it's like, all right, Susie's not a good person to share that with, unfortunately. Um, so there were some times when I had to learn, it's like, okay, who do I experience grace from? Who is it that, you know, when I tell them my dreams, they aren't going to say, oh, well, psh, that'll never happen. Who is it that's going to actually encourage you and speak life into you and draw things out of you that you might not have seen yourself versus, ah, who do you think you are? Get down. Like, no, you can't do that. So lots of, lots of lessons learned, but ultimately I well, wanted I just, to- I just want to say, <laughs> you know, I'm so glad that you are seeing yourself the way that God sees you now. And that this this process, you know, this this healing process, um, is continuously unfolding in your life, and that you're speaking your voice, and you are a beautiful speaker. I mean, you had me on the edge of my seat listening to every word that you're saying. So it's in I I listen to a lot of people, so that means you're you're definitely capturing me with your uh, sincerity and your truth and your wisdom with what you're sharing. So let's tell the audience how they can look you up right now, how they can follow you. You also help people write their personal memoirs. You started a publishing company. We have two minutes. So <laughs> no. All righty. Um, my website is called DesireeThiessa.com. Um, D-E-S-I-R-E-E-T-H-E-A-S-S-A. Um, there you can find more about the memoirs that I've written. You can find more about the publishing company that I started and we can work together in helping you write your own story because writing your own story, it is so powerful, so therapeutic and very much needed. Um, this example, one of the books that you will see where I share more of my testimony is called Broken Chapters. And I wrote this with 20 other authors and we all have various different stories in there. Um, so you'll find that on the site. You'll find a free download on there as well. But yeah, DesireeTheessa.com. Yeah, Desiree, would you be willing to come on another show? Because I have questions that I want to ask you, uh, you know, where we can go deeper into um, some of the questions that I have, particularly, you know, in, in your in your family life, where you were, the, some of the things that you were faced with. And I think um, it, it, it would be, it would really help a lot of people when they would hear a little bit more. So would you be open? I'll have Ashley connect us via email and then we'll set up another time. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, good. Well, it was such a pleasure to meet you. I'm so glad that you listened to your mentor, that you had somebody. Uh, God always sends us people, uh, you know, to support us if we're willing to see uh, and, and go deeper. And so it's wonderful that you had your mentor and that you were going this deep. So I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. And we're going to take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie show. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. My next guest is Jill Marie Howell. She's an emotional health coach and a somatic trauma recovery practitioner who has overcome complex PTSD, chronic pain, and decades of living with anxiety and depression. She's endured multiple traumatic events since childhood and has had two dark nights of the soul where she was at the end, at, at, at her ends of herself wanting to die. After integrating somatic therapy, brain retraining and inner child healing, she now lives at peace within herself and confident that she can guide herself through any emotional experience she faces. Because of her personal healing journey, Jill became a coach who guides women to break their survival coping patterns, reduce shame and rewire their nervous system using these integrative mind-body healing modalities. Jill equips women to create a life of peace and joy and dance in the mess of living as a human. Welcome to the show today, Jill Marie. Thank Howell. you. Yes. Welcome. So my goodness, um, I read in your bio that you wanted to die. Yeah. Twice. So, twice. So tell us about that. 
you know, both periods of those times, there were traumatic situations happening. It was in the heat of those really hard moments where you're like, I don't have what it takes to endure this. This feels like too much. I'm exhausted and I'm just done feeling the pain. I'm just done. Um, and the first time I actually had a vision of how I would do it. And it scared the heck out of me. And I wasn't even thinking about how to do it. It just came to me. And I was like, whoa, that was scary. And I got on medication after that. And I started, you know, I was already going to cognitive talk therapy. I have actually gone through cognitive talk therapy for two decades of my life. Basically from college on, I went through cognitive talk therapy. And then when the second traumatic experience happened, and these were both as adults, I, I really, at that point felt again, like I wanted to do something about it. And I felt scared. And when I felt scared and got to that point a second time, I was like, oh man, oh man, this ain't good. <laughs> um, and that's where I realized that I needed more than cognitive talk therapy for myself. My sensitive system, I had lived with so much dysregulation my entire life. Like really since I was born, I was born into my mom having some crisis going on. Um, my parents divorced when I was a baby. Um, and so I feel like my body has always been ultra sensitive. So that second dark night of the soul moment where I was like, I I'm just done. Like, and I'm scared. And now I'm really scared. Um, I was like, I need to do something different. I, I need something more than cognitive talk therapy. It was helping to extent in certain moments, but my body was still feeling alarm. My body still felt unsafe in the world. And so I couldn't cognitively think my way there. So it really propelled me on this journey of discovering a lot of different healing modalities. And, you know, I think, you know, I read in your bio, the, um, you're that you're an emotional coach. Mm -hmm. So I think that was the piece that was missing. We, cause we can think all day long and, you know, to say powerful things and think, like you said, cognitive and think our way, but if we don't feel it. Yeah. And that's you know, where somatics come in. Right. right. Yeah. The somatics are the felt sensations of the body. And that's where the emotions are stored and, you know, belong in the body. So if the we're thinking and we're mantraing our way, trying yeah. to get to a feeling, if the body still doesn't feel it and isn't in alignment, there's a war going on within us. Right. And that's the part that's hard to identify during the time of crisis. Mm -hmm. When, when that crisis is happening, that's hard to identify. It's the piece that's missing. It's the emotional feeling that you're safe and that yes. you're secure and that you're whole and that you yes. feel held and that you feel loved. It's that feeling in mm -hmm. the body, owning that feeling, right? Yes. Instead receiving. Of, right. Receiving. Receiving that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So good. So then you went and you did your, um, your emotional work. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so glad you got help. My God. It's like when you got scared of your own self, like when you got the mm -hmm. vision, like, oh, this is how I would do it. Or this is that because really, I, I really truly feel that, you know, you and I talked a little bit about my own suicidal ideation, but um, taking action when people take action on suicide, where they're actually doing it, you're at that point. And mm -hmm. that is what scared you because you could have actually acted on it. Like when you're so in the moment of that emotional and, and, and it takes over, you could easily act on it. And when you got scared, you got scared because it's the second time it happened. And oh no, I got to do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. what happened? What happened then? Did you get somebody then that was the perfect person for you on the emotional level? So I got someone who started my journey. So I ended up hiring a trauma coach, which is basically what I'm doing for other women now. But I hired somebody who was really heavy bent on brain retraining. And so that was one piece of the puzzle for me. And then I discovered that I still needed more pieces, that that still wasn't enough, that there was still 
this part of my body that was still holding on. And that's where the somatics came in. And I started really exploring inner child healing and parts work and going into the shadows within me and recognizing I always, my entire life have felt a tug of war inside of me. There was one part of me that felt one way and another part of me that felt another way. And so I really learned to hold space for both sides Mm -hmm. and allowing there to be, you know, just the combination of a lot of emotions. And it's really in that moment when we feel a lot of emotions all at once, where it feels like too much and our body and our brain just kind of, you know, we are living in that fight flight and then it just shuts down and, and we just don't have capacity within us to like know how to move forward. We don't have the tools and the resources. So what I really felt like I did was I went on a journey, went on a journey of discovering different somatic tools and practices to really reconnect with these these younger parts of me that still really were hurting deep inside. And I recognize I had these younger versions of me then I had these young adult versions of me, all of these past versions of me that were still holding so much pain and didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And I just learned to love myself and all of those parts. I think when the second time, when I got to that place, I really discovered that I was against myself and I was disgusted with myself and the shame was so thick for being where I was again. Right. And getting there made me realize like, wow, I'm at a war within myself. I don't even like myself. I can look in the mirror and I don't like what I see. And now I've befriended all of those parts, all of the parts of me that I've hated, pushed away, was disgusted by. I I hold them tenderly with love and compassion now. That's so good. Mm-hmm. That's so sweet. I I can relate to um hating. <laughs> I can relate to hating the self. I I mm-hmm. found those parts in myself too where mm-hmm. I I hated at the root core of what was missing was mm-hmm. placing my love into those parts of that I hated. And so yeah. it's so beautiful, um, the work that you did with yourself. I find it interesting, you know, how you said um, uh, that, you know, it all seemed like it was too much. Mm-hmm. And at the time, it does seem like it is too much. But mm-hmm. the more that this work that you're doing and this deep inner integration that you're doing and the acceptance and the shadow work and all of that, suddenly now you are in your superpowers of being able to not only have you loved yourself in this space but you're able to now also hold the space for others Mm -hmm. in that way isn't and you know the parts where you thought oh this is all too much now this is all integrated and out of the way and now you're able to be there for others where they feel it's too much amen yeah it's beautiful it's really cool. And I, now I have appreciation and gratitude for those dark nights of the soul moments because yeah. they've led me to this place of purpose and passion yeah, and, and helping bring light into the world. Well, I want to have another discussion with you as well. I've, I've had this feeling with all of my guests today, which doesn't happen all the time, but mm-hmm. I'd love to have you come back where we can go a little bit deeper into this. Sure. Maybe we can do that in the early part of next year, but let's tell the audience right now, if they want to look you up and, uh, you know, make an investment, maybe get it on a discovery call with you, or even just follow you on social media. How can they find you? Yeah. So on Instagram, I'm at dancing in the mess. So my whole philosophy is that, you know, we are dancing in the mess together. So dancing in the mess at Facebook and Instagram, and actually on a, on my URL too, for my websites, just dancing in the mess.com making it simple and easy. Yeah. Dancing in the mess. That's, that's a beautiful way to put it. It's really mm-hmm. being, being in the mess of it all. And now let's clean it up. Right. And let's, let's let beautiful things bloom yeah. from the mess, like the lotus flower that blooms from the deep, dark pits of the swampy ponds. Yeah, like the flower that's behind you. Well, I just want to yeah. say, Jill, you are radiating. So mm-hmm. the Thank beauty you. and the love is just oozing out of you. 
And thank so you. you can feel it all the way over here. So mm -hmm. thank you so much today for coming on the show and for doing all this beautiful work that you did on yourself. And I'm glad that you didn't take action and that you're here now sharing your gifts with everyone else. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks Great. for having me. I'm seeing those emotions. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we're going to take a break, everyone. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. I can't wait for you to meet our next guest, Michelle A. Wilson. She's a multi-passionate mompreneur and enlightened leader, and she's profoundly dedicating to empowering mothers of special needs children who aspire to launch passion-driven businesses. With over three decades of entrepreneurship experience, Michelle has supported over 300 families in nurturing their ventures, providing transform transformative coaching in time management and productivity. She's the visionary creator of the Mompreneur Achievement Method Master Course and serves as both the TV host and executive producer of the Mompreneur Conversations TM show. Michelle stands as a beacon of inspiration for mothers navigating the intertwined paths of caregiving, and entrepreneurship, aiding them in reclaiming their identities, redefining balance, and achieving a fulfilling life. Welcome to the show today, Michelle. Thank you for having me, Cornelia. I'm so honored to be here today and really yes. happy to be here. It's wonderful to have you here. So, you know, being a mompreneur that uh, has a special needs child as, as yourself, take us into that story and how uh, your mission was created through all of that. Well, it actually happened about 13 years ago, not knowingly, but uh, my son was six years old at the time, and um, he was actually having medical uh, issues since he was three years old. And um, at six years old, I had to rush him to the hospital, and our life changed in a moment when he was diagnosed with a very rare medical condition. And I'm a single mom. Um, I actually have three children. I have two boys and two girls, and this is my, my youngest son. And um, I still... I had to make the decision of whether or not I was going to stay in the hospital with him while he was being um, diagnosed and treated or go back to work. And I decided to stay in the hospital with him. And that hospital stay ended up being five months for the first year. And we've been in and out of the hospital usually seven, I mean, like four or five times a year because of his condition. But at that moment, I, I also needed to earn a living. So I started a business from my son's hospital room um, at that moment. So that's kind of how it was birthed. I didn't know at the time I was birthing Mompreneur Conversation Show, but I was really just doing it out of need at, at first. And I really wanted to be there for my son and his care. Well, I can only imagine, you know, um, to be in your son's position and to his, his feeling and knowing that you're there. Uh, what a what a wise wise move you made, um, you know, to uh, be by his side during that time, even though you had to make a living. That 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 says so much because not a lot of people would be able to make that choice. Yeah, I remember one time I was in the hospital, and um, you know, I stayed there twenty four seven, sleeping on the cot, and there was a a child, you know, just crying because his mother had to leave you know it's just like saying don't leave mom and um you know so for me it was just really I felt it, I would needed to be there for him 100% of the time so I just I had a laptop a cell phone and um luckily I had a good support system at the time that I was able to start my business um, from his room yeah and so exactly what is the business tell us about the business because you had to set up your business according to your own rules exactly not, so not not the rules of okay this is how you do this this is how you do this right well actually um i have multiple businesses so i still have this business today it was a network marketing um business it is legal services and what i loved about it um actually well i transitioned to mompreneur conversation but at the time i just had really great mentors and and it's a you know direct sales we we um pro we marketed legal services. And that's actually how I was working with small business owners because we had, you know, products and services for small business owners who wanted to incorporate their business and also protect their business. So, you know, literally I was making phone calls um, from his room. And then there was times if I had to go to a meeting, you know, I would have a family member come and sit with him 
And um, through that experience, though, I learned about systems. It's really important to create systems for your business. However, at the same time, there, the system that I was, you know, developing at the time was really for, you know, like for men and for mothers um, or women who didn't have a special needs child. So I felt myself being burnt out all the time because I was trying to live up to their expectations. And so, I, you know, there was a time when I actually burnt out and I had to really redefine balance for myself and still take those nuggets that I learned from that business, but, you know, kind of redefine it for myself so that I can be there 100% for my child, because I was going through mommy guilt, you know, always feeling like I didn't have enough time for my business, um, or I wasn't there for my son. And so I always felt this tug of war going on, even though and I and I loved what I was doing, but I just was always I felt exhausted and overwhelmed majority of the time. And so when I hit burnt out, for the very last time, I'm like, I'm going to do something very differently. And that's really how I looked at you know, how can I build a business around my core values and around my son? And, um, you know, now I'm, I'm learning to be able to share that with other moms who are working special needs children. So what would you say are the top three things right now that if the woman is listening and she is finding herself in a similar position like yourself, um, you know, what, what, what would, what could she do differently? The um, first thing is that we have superpowers. I mean, what we do 24 seven as caregivers, understanding that we have the leadership skills because we have to, you know, be there for our child. We have negotiation skills because we're always talking with doctors and therapists and we're advocates for our children. So those skills that we have developed as moms raising special needs children can be transformed into a business, right? Into something that you love. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing was um, just really understanding your core values, um, your family values, your values to your child and to your business and make sure that they're in harmony with each other. Because there was a time I remember um, I was living up to the expectation and always be on time for an appointment and never miss an appointment. And I woke up one morning and my son had a, like a hundred degree uh, temperature. And when he gets a temperature, that's very serious for him. And I was torn. I'm like, well, maybe I can make it to that appointment and get back in time. And, and I did get in the car, right. And I started driving, but then I realized you know, the reason why I, I have this business is so I could be there for my son. So I turned the car around and went back home and I was there for my son. So I had to realize that I had to redefine balance. Yes, we want to be on time for appointments, but you know, I want to work with people that are understanding that I have a son and that I may have to change that appointment. So just being flexible and adaptable and understanding what your core value is. And my value is, is my family and my son. So always realizing that my son comes first before my business. My, my business is going to be there. I've learned that it's always going to be there. And then the third thing is about self-compassion and self-care. You've, you know, you heard that saying about putting the oxygen mask on first when you're flying, you want to make sure you're always taking care of yourself. I always, you know, we have a tendency of losing our identity and our, and our children because we just want to take care of them. And, and um, my mother was actually a special needs mom. So I, I kind of learned from her and my sister had Down syndrome at the time. And she, and unfortunately, she would always put her, her health by taking care of my sister. And I saw her health decline because of that. So I really, it's really important to be compassionate to yourself and, um, you know, have time for yourself. I call them micro moments so that you can either, you know, meditate, pray, take a bath. I mean, just taking a bath for me is like, you know, self-compassion or, and, and, and spiritual and personal development is also really important. So those are probably you know, these tips. I mean, the, the tips are amazing. I mean, these are tips they need to be for any uh, woman entrepreneur that, that runs a business. Doesn't matter if you are have children or not, because I think all these tips are really important. I was looking at just listening for the tips to myself and all of those apply. Yes. All, of them apply. all the things that you said, which were really great tips. It's interesting listening to you. I did think about the father because mm -hmm. you are the mother and the father in the relationship, right? And how I was thinking about the father because early on, I used to always think of, you know, like when I was, when I was doing my childhood healing, I put so much pressure on my mother, but I never even put any contemplation or anything towards my father because he was absent and he wasn't there. So he was off the hook right off the bat. And I was thinking about that with, uh, with you. 
which, which you deserve an extra dose of compassion, extra, extra compassion, because my God, you know, you are really doing it all. Uh, you're doing it all. And you said, you said you have a great support system around you. So how is your son today? How is your son doing today? He is thriving. You know, he, he was, he has multiple diagnoses. So um, his primary is called chronic pseudo obstruction. So he's on a feeding tube, like between 14 and 15 hours a day. And then wow. he's also been diagnosed. He's on the spectrum of autism, but he's thriving. He's, he's 20 now. And wow. so we're going into that transition of like, you know, what would you like to do um, with, with your, with your life and, and so forth. But this has been a really good year for him. Um, last year we were in the hospital like six times. And when we go to the hospital, it's like a week. So I've had to learn how to run a business from this hospital room, but this year we've had a really good year. And um, yes, I've, I'm a single mom and been, you know, um, but his, his father is there, you know, when, when he can be and so forth like that. But we're really, um, just really thankful and grateful this year. He was actually had some time to spend with his father. So that's been um, amazing for, for my son too, that he's been actually been able to have a, a mom and dad for him. Um, but he's doing what, really well. Yeah. What an incredible, um, story, honestly, it's, it's amazing how well you're dealing with it. I'm so happy that your son is doing well and he's thriving and may he continue to do so in 30 seconds, give us your social media handles where people can find you. Absolutely. So on Facebook, I'm Michelle with one L M I C H E L E a Wilson official on Facebook. And then on all like Instagram and on LinkedIn, it's this Michelle a Wilson. So it's really easy to find me by my name. That's how you can find me. Excellent. Keep doing the good work, Michelle. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. It was an honor and a pleasure to meet you and hear about your incredible uh, journey. And I want to thank the audience for listening and tuning in. And thank you to Transformation Talk Network for always sponsoring us so well and supporting us in so, so many ways. Thank you so much. We'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye, thank everyone. You've been listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love your call to action. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio. Cornelia's joy is to engage others in practical ways, showing us how to live in the new earth in harmony with our true nature. For more information on Cornelia and her extraordinary work, or to listen to past shows, go to her website at corneliastephanie.com.